thank you for tuning in to Amy's Crypt. Today I am in Delhi, India, and I'm about to take you around the Ferocia Boiler, which is a massive ruined fort from the 1300s and said to be home to many jinns. The boiler is a massive ruined fort and it dates all the way back to 1354. It sits pretty close to the centre of Delhi and today it remains in ruins but it is still a place of worship and contains several buildings of significance. Though many are attracted to visiting this place, it does have a very creepy side which is what I am interested in and why I brought you guys here. This fort is believed by many people to be one of the most haunted places in Delhi, India and that is because it is said to be occupied by jinns. What is cool about jinns is they are actually quite a new concept to me. I actually didn't know anything about them until I started a YouTube channel and many of you, my subscribers, had mentioned jinns to me. The only real knowledge that I had was that I knew that jinn translated to genie in uh, Western culture and being a horror fan I knew about the Wishmaster which features a very, very very evil gin. The shit just hit the fan. It was also one of my favourite horror movies from when I was a kid. <laughs> Jinns are beings, yet they were supposedly created a little bit differently to humans. It's said that at the beginning, humans were created from clay, whereas jinns were created from a smokeless fire. And this has led them to not really be a physical being, but something that humans actually can't see. So what really is a jinn? It isn't a ghost, but it's not an angel or a person. It's almost like its own being, just created a little bit differently. It is said that jinns have the power to manipulate our world as they can come in and out of our di dimension and they generally live in a different dimension. They also have the power to manipulate humans' minds, especially if they are of a weaker demeanour and sometimes even possess them. There are stories of jinns falling in love with humans and then coming to possess the ones that they do love. Some other cool and noteworthy facts about jinns is that they can live for hundreds, if not thousands of years. They even have the ability to marry and give birth to their own children. They can shape shift and present themselves in different forms so they can look like humans or they can look like certain animals. There are several different subtypes of jinns as well and many of these choose to reside in different types of areas and one of those being ancient ruins such as this place. Now today is Thursday and I have specifically selected this day to visit the fort and it is a very special day and that is because it draws hundreds to thousands of people here to worship these jinns that are said to reside here. They will come and gather here, leave offerings such as the candle that was burning just behind me. They will pray to these jinns and ask them for favours or wishes, scribble them on small pieces of paper and leave them here. So we're going to go out and see if we can witness this and see what this is all about. This seems like a very cool cultural thing related to jinns and the paranormal, something that I want to explore a little bit more. If you are from India, Delhi or you know anything about jinns, maybe I've missed something, maybe I've given, given a fact that isn't quite correct, please leave me a comment below. I would love to know more about jinns and how they relate to you, your culture, or even if you have any stories relating to jinns, please let me know. So we just walked in and I didn't realize this would be my nightmare. Look at all of these birds. And as soon as we walked in, eagle swooped me <laughs> this is like freaking me out these are eagles right above you guys there's hundreds of them too they're sweeping that dog this is oh my god face your fears and they go out there oh my god I want to go and Jared wants to go ask him to feed them. I was sleeping the dogs before. Oh my god. I'm going to cry in a minute. Alright, I'll film There's you. There's a bird. Get... Don't, don't. 
electrical. I feel a little bit safer in here, but if one flies in here, I'm gonna scream everyone's ears off. So I need to get out of here because this is. I'm getting out of here. So we've come across our first bunch of candles here. So people supposedly come here and worship the jinns and they leave uh, offerings and light candles, make little shrines to ask them for favors or wishes being a genie. So that's cool to see. And this was the candle that was burning. It's gone now. Oh, incense as well. All right, this place is really, really busy. Um, you see all the people behind me here. But we're going to go into that and try and explore other parts of the ruins and see if we can see anyone worshipping these gins. Alright guys, now that I've been traumatised by those eagles and those birds, uh, we're going to go try and find the mosque here and take a look around maybe some of the other structures too. I think this cat is eating the offerings. So people leave grains and milk usually. I don't know what that is. That's not a gin, no, no. that's a cat. <laughs> it's not a gin. <laughs> Maybe it's taken the form of a cat. Maybe. They do, apparently. It's kind of cute. It's very cute. Hey, kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, it's going for that one now. Okay. Gonna have a drink. So in one area of the ruins, you can just sort of see behind me, and all around there's a bunch of stones and people have left offerings of grain and what to me looks like popcorn kernels but they're everywhere a lot of flower petals and breads and it's kind of attracted a lot of animals to come eat them I can see a bowl of milk over here as well so and I have incense sticks candles more petals and I have a, a letter here as well which unfortunately I can't read because it's written in Hindi um, but this is pretty cool people I wasn't sure if this was something that would actually happen I, sometimes I read things online and when I get to the place you find oh they don't really do that but people actually do come here and worship and they do leave offerings crazy there's so many people just up here trying to get into this, the little mosque temple so I'm just in one of uh, the prayer rooms now and people are coming in here lighting incense candles leaving offerings and praying and a man just brought us into this particular one I think because it's a little bit quieter than the other ones and we might have looked a little bit lost, but it's really cool. Well, it's really dark in here. I need bats. Huh? Bats. Bats? There are bats in here. Yeah. There are bats. You have light? Less light? Yes. Oh my god, there's so many bats. Do you have. Oh, Very crowd on this day. It's only lit by candlelight in here. Are you allowed to put a light on? You you see it first. It's flashlight, okay? Yeah. First flash and then we see picture. Yeah. Oh wow. And it's so hazy from all the incense in here. There's so many bats. Oh, they're really cute. Yeah, thank you. Also, also so many. So many, you see plants? Wow. Hello, sir. Yeah. So, so many you see on the oh, yeah. child of birds. Yeah. You take the picture for the remember. Oh my god. There are a lot of bats in the mosque.
the outside of the mosque now and all of these people are going into these little rooms just off of the side and that's where they pray to the jinns and leave uh, candles and offerings and their letters for their wishes. It's pretty cool in there. So I was just told that this place behind me here used to function as a prison and this behind me was the prison poorhouse. So people were kept here in all these cells just along here. So we thought this massive line of people was to go up the top here. But it's not. Apparently they're lining up for some chicken. <laughs> just slowly leaving now all behind me all the big crowd uh, leaving all their incense and candles burning and it's really cool at night you can kind of see them still in the temple behind me it was really interesting and it's something that I haven't actually seen before I've only been in India a few days so it was really cool to see if you guys know anything about this practice or gins or anything from what I've heard the gins at least here aren't necessarily a bad thing they're actually a good thing people leave those letters and they leave photocopies of the letters everywhere asking for things that will help them in their lives like their wishes or to help them through trouble so it's kind of cool that they come here and pray Thursday is definitely the busiest day and today was quite crazy there was a lot of people here but it was very cool to see Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you want to read any more about this spooky place, head to amyscrypt.com. Until next time.